to experiment one, statistical analysis of data. I'm going to give a brief introductory uh, to this video series. Um, technically, we're supposed to be in the lab, right? Um, the required uh, coursework is that uh, you have like hands-on experience with uh, setting up experiments, doing measurements, maybe a little troubleshooting. Um, how are we supposed to do that online? Um, Traditionally, you'd walk into your lab, you'd get like a 30 minute uh, lecture on what the lab was about, the theory behind it, and uh, uh, most likely some of the aspects behind the equipment you'll be using. Then you would be cut loose to your lab bench and you would uh, uh, gather with three other, or two other individuals for, in a group of three and do the experiment. So at this point, I'm gonna assume that you had your lecture with your instructor and at the point where he dismisses you to your lab bench, you get me. And uh, I will be like your lab partner. Um, I'll set up the experiment and um, we'll do it together. Uh, some uh, labs, I'll provide you with data. I, I, I won't uh, videotape myself uh, doing the whole thing and that's just to keep these videos short. That's only if there's nothing to be gained or learned by you by watching me repetitive, repetitively doing something. Um, <clears throat> unlike your typical lab partner though, I will or I usually make a lot of comments during uh, the experiment. And the reason for that is that once you're assigned to your bench, you have the opportunity to raise your hand and ask questions. Or sometimes uh, students get a bit confused. Um, they don't read their lab manual prior to coming in or whatever the case may be and the instructor will spot this walk over to you guys and you know maybe help get you started or address any questions you may have so uh, to circumvent that problem where you don't have that opportunity I will um, typically discuss or elaborate on certain aspects of the um, of the experiment and um, instead of just getting handed a collection of data, you'll actually um, have the opportunity to watch how it was collected. So hopefully it'll be more uh, meaningful to you. So uh, that is my goal to make, uh, for you to have the closest experience as you can, you know, with this online um, uh, learning that resembles being in the actual lab. So. Um, I will bear in mind that um, um, I could get long-winded and these videos could uh, uh, be pretty lengthy. Although I don't anticipate that in 2100. <clears throat> there are other labs that are very um, uh, detailed and, and there's a lot of uh, different measurements associated with them. There's uh, more complicated equipment uh, that I discuss and hook up uh, while the viewer watches. And those could run like around an hour, but these um, in 2100 um, will probably be um, shorter. So with that said, um, I hope you find these useful and let's get started. So what I'll do is I'll uh, turn the camera around and you'll see the uh, uh, equipment that we're going to use today. We are going to collect, by the way, I'm not going to mention anything today about theory, measurements, error. I'm going to try my hardest not to because sometimes I want to, but uh, I, I am, I, my plan is to literally just do the mechanics of the experiment. And um, what we'll be doing is uh, collecting a set of data and that set will consist of um, measuring the distance that a ball, or in this case a marble, uh, falls after being rolled down a track. So let's get to it. So ladies and gentlemen, here is our ramp. Here are our marbles. We have 35 of them. We are going to get 35 different data points. Every time we roll a marble down the track, we put it in the same exact position. So I can do that by butting it up against this wood here. The marble will fall, travel across the room, give it distance, hit the ground, 
and on the ground um, I have a piece of carbon paper with a piece of regular paper on top of it. So when the ball, the marble strikes the paper, the carbon paper will make a mark. And uh, that's how we will record its position. So let's go ahead and do this. And um, by the way, I, I, I did say that I wasn't gonna say much in this video and that's because all of this is so um, relatively basic. Um, the point of this lab is in the theory and the mathematics. Shouldn't have done that. One. Two. Three. Four. Let me get you a different view. So now you're on the ground and there's five. Six. This would be one of those cases where I put you on pause so you don't have to watch me do all 35. So be back in a moment. Okay, a couple of things. I just looked at your lab manual and it says for this particular particular lab you should be in groups of two. So there's 18 students in your class, that means there'd be nine groups, so there should be nine data uh, sheets. Hmm. I'll go ahead and do this eight more times and get you guys nine. Anyway, this was the sheet that was taped to the floor and the carbon paper was underneath. So there is a record of exactly where our marble fell. Now, I, I did go through the trouble of measuring the distance between the end of this page to the end of um, this track, but you don't need it. What the lab manual instructs you to do is just simply measure from your reference line. And what I'm, what I'm gonna do is scan these and give them to your instructor. So you'll get a scanned copy of this da data sheet and I'll make some kind of uh, notation like those arrows there that would indicate that this is the actual edge or reference line that you should um, measure from. So it was placed like this. This edge was closest to the track. And of course, um, we only need to measure from the edge provided every group put their paper at the exact same spot and didn't move this which is easy to do in my case because I'm the only one doing it. So anyway, um, this was by far the funnest video that, um, and easiest, or maybe funnest because it was so easy that I've made. That's it, folks. Um, I'll get these uh, printed out for you or uh, scanned and send them to your instructor and see you next week.